lovethealchemist.com. I am so happy to see you. Welcome to day nine of 30 Days of Ease. Yesterday, we talked all about introducing new voices into our lives and ensuring that those voices are valuable voices who can help us continuously grow and improve. I want to caveat this and say that we are in a time where people are really feeling sensitive. They're feeling hopeless. They definitely, myself included, like I am shook because the life that I had is no more. And when that happens to us, we become a little naive. We become a little more susceptible to being influenced by people who normally would not influence us. And that's because we don't have an anchor of grounding and we don't know which way is up which way is down and that creates a lot of chaos and that chaos can lead us into bad places even with good intentions the phrase the road to hell is paved with good intentions is so real and so accurate and there are so many people out there who give terrible advice who don't know what they're doing and they don't mean anything bad. They don't mean to put you in a state where you're going to make terrible choices for yourself in the long term. They might truly be trying to help and you have to know based on your intuitive feelings and based on your own psychology if it's something that's helping you, enabling you, or just totally holding you back, snuffing out your light and that can be really difficult. But one way that you can really, really create a strong anchor and be very grounded is by having a daily routine. A routine is different from a schedule. A routine is an empowering way to prime yourself. So priming is where you take your time specifically at the beginning of the day, and you prime yourself for confidence, for success, for just conquering whatever it is that you want to do. And when you prime yourself, it will change your psychology for the rest of the day. And if you don't believe me, why don't you just try it out and see if it works? I'm telling you, it will. When I really, really, really encourage you to journal while you do this so that you can go back and you can look at the days when you were doing certain things to find out if a routine works for you consistently or if maybe you can change some things and make it stronger. Don't hold yourself to be too rigid and here's why. When people are rigid, they actually stop themselves from adapting. And if you are going to survive and you are going to really adjust to a new normal, which is what this whole 30 days is all about, then you have to adapt. You have to be able to listen, take cues, and really assess, is this working for me? Is it not? And what really is going on? So, don't be too rigid. What are some signs that you might benefit from having a daily routine? If you have stress, if you have anxiety, if you are really feeling overwhelmed, if you can't concentrate or focus, then these are signs that you really would benefit from a routine. And the person who is saying this is a psychologist and professor at NYU School of Medicine and essentially what she says is if people don't have structure and are sitting around with less to focus on then they also probably will find themselves thinking about any I'm saying any she didn't say any stressful situation more which can also lead to additional stress and anxiety so uh, hello, raise your hand if you have ever done this. I'm gonna raise two because I think I do it every day. And 
And the best thing that I can compare this to is just like your mind is racing, your mind is spinning, maybe you're having an extra coffee, trying to wake up, trying to like get in the zone and focus, but then it just keeps you in a loop because you aren't going anywhere. You're not moving, you're not changing your activity. And so your mind does the same thing. It doesn't change. It's just looping in chaos, like a tornado. And in energy healing, when you see someone and they have almost like tornado energy around them, it's oftentimes because of this type of situation where they have no routine, they have no groundedness, and it manifests as a tornado storm. And a lot of people will say, this means you're really activating and you're feeling alive. That is a lie. That is a lie. And here's why I'm saying that's a lie. When you are really challenging your own belief system, which is something you should do, it's going to feel really difficult and that feels chaotic. And you up level into a new normal. That is a different type of chaos. And that type of chaos will hit you at the weirdest times where you are doing something that is out of your wheelhouse or you are really putting yourself out there and then you suddenly have this panic and this anxiety and you're like, <gasps> why do I feel this way? That's different. When you are in a chaotic loop, the fear is in your mind and you're gonna feel it in your mind. So it's all about your energy. If you can really feel where your body is using a lot of energy, then you're going to be able to really hone in on this more and identify, is this a fear-based loop that is disabling me and it's bad anxiety? Or is this anxiety that's coming from underneath my diaphragm or wherever it is for you? You're gonna pay attention, you're gonna keep a journal and you're going to write all of this down. And over time, when you reread things, you will understand what your tendencies and habits are. And that will help you uncover everything you need to know about yourself because other people cannot look at you and tell you about you. You need to look at yourself and tell yourself about yourself. Studies have shown that having a routine helps you decrease your stress levels. It helps you form good daily habits. So things that take care of your health, wealth, love, and happiness. It helps you take better care of your health, both mentally and physically. It helps you feel more productive and it helps you feel more focused. I really want to hone in on the fact that it says helps you feel. So this goes into your state, right? It's not actually making them more productive. They feel more productive. And when you feel like you're accomplishing things, you show up differently. You're a little more vibrant and confident and maybe you're smiling more maybe you are more willing to take chances that you wouldn't have taken if you were feeling small depressed upset and purposeless a routine has to be driven by something right so yesterday we talked about purpose and identifying what your purpose and what your goals are and doing that possibly with a coach or alone um no matter what you do, when you are identifying your purpose, then you have your actions already mapped out and then you don't have to think, what is it that I need to do? You already know and you already know where those actions are going to take you. If you were to just sit down and be like, I need a routine, um, I'm going to work out and I'm going to eat healthy foods and I'm gonna cook. It's just, that's a mess. And it leads you nowhere and it's not helping you. It's just enabling the spinning tornado cycle of your energy. It's not breaking any patterns. It's not breaking any habits. It's just blanketing. It's not changing anything. So, you look at your 18 month goal, you look at your six month goals, 
all of it. You have what you need to do working backwards and now you plug it into a schedule. So I just launched an e-commerce store for my business. I have a marketing agency and I manage e-commerce stores for clients and I decided to have my own. I have goals for that e-commerce store and in order to achieve those goals, I need to have a power hour where I am working on my store. And that is one of the things that goes into my routine. So working like that and writing it all down, I put it into a calendar. I have a routine when I come home. What am I doing? How am I ending my day? And what is it that I'm doing tonight that sets me up for tomorrow and having a successful tomorrow? When you are purposeless, then it is really overwhelming and it's too much to do all of these things. But when you have a purpose and you know what it is, the prize is, your goal, then you have every reason to do it and you have very few reasons not to do it because at the end of the day, those goals that you have short term and long term are meant to be meaningful. And if they are not meaningful and they're not enough for you to get up and to do all of these things, then that's a cue that you should look into what you wrote down and what you're stating as your end goal and purpose because maybe that's just an end goal you thought would be good because it looks good on paper, it seems acceptable, but maybe it's not right for you. And look, it happens all the time to everyone. I mean, honestly, I did this around the time of my birthday and I was like, I had a call with my coach and I was like, hey, um, my goals don't make me want to take action because they're not making me feel anything meaningful. And so then we started to revamp my goals and my priorities and really restructure what it is I'm doing and how I'm spending my time. And since doing that, I have seen a complete 180. I was feeling so depressed. I was feeling like I was just, I like I had no purpose to be honest. It just felt like I was going through the motions, living a life that maybe someone would like, but that someone was not me and it's my life. That doesn't make sense. So let's keep going. We live in a world of distraction. We can't pretend like we don't and you have to set yourself up for success. No one is going to do it for you. And you have to just take ownership and have fun with it and be unapologetic. Okay, so things that will help support you in developing a routine is to focus on getting daily exercise, to make sure that you are really getting enough sleep and if you are a woman, like we talked about, maybe you plug in nap time. Um, when I am on the second day of my period, I actually take the whole day off as much as I can. And I, because it just, my energy just drops. So working in some flexibility there is really important. Eating healthy meals is good. You should eat at the same time every day because your body will absorb the nutrients better. So if you don't have a reason to eat at the same time every day. Now you do. Staying in touch with friends and family members. So this could be something as simple as like, you know, every week I'm going to share a positive memory of something that I experienced with a friend and reach out and say, thinking of this and I hope you're having an amazing day. It doesn't have to be anything lengthy or crazy. I think when people hear that, they think they have to have hours long phone conversations with people to stay in touch. And you don't, all you have to do is just reach out and say, hey, you matter to me. You might not have an hour. You don't have to say this, but you matter. And that's more than enough. Okay. And when you're doing this, it can sometimes feel like a lot. And for me, it's really, really, really important to plug in time for my hobbies and for 
just like creative brainstorming time. I get really inspired when I am watching docu-series or documentaries or a really, really, really intense TV drama. So these are things that are non-negotiables for me because they change my mindset. And watching Netflix might seem like a vice to someone. It's actually empowering for me and you know just don't judge yourself what works for you is going to be unique to you do not try to mimic someone else's schedule and think that it's right for you just get to know yourself get to know what you need what you want and try to release the judgment don't be hard on yourself at the beginning of explaining these benefits i talked to you about the importance of feeling productive, feeling accomplished, the feeling. So this isn't to say that you're not going to feel uncomfortable. The end result is that you should feel amazing about what you are doing. And sometimes in the moment, it can be really challenging and we can kind of talk ourselves down and not recognize all the progress we've made. So in those moments where you are just like, oh my God, I'm way too tired, then just take a minute, maybe meditate, do something that brings you back to life and drink a cup of tea, whatever it is for you, do yoga and then go back to what you wanted to do or what your routine was. And again, the journal that you keep will help you identify what your golden peak hours are. And you can use your sleep archetype as a general rule of thumb to help you during this process to understand what your day is like in terms of when your mind is active. I actually am more creative in the morning and then I am more go 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 in the afternoon and in the evenings i just want to talk i want to connect and i want to just experience something interesting so whether that is something like watching a documentary or going out to dinner or cooking something new with someone else um meaning i hate to cook <laughs> whatever it is it just try to pay attention to what your rhythms are and it will help you schedule the right things during the right time of the day and that alone will unlock so many doors for you so i'm going to cut this here i could talk about this honestly all day and this video is like four times longer than i thought it would be but it's valuable stuff it's really important and everyone should know Hey, goodbye. This is Diaz and Gupta from lovethealchemist.com. I love you guys. Thank you for joining me. Hit like, hit share, hit subscribe, and follow me on Instagram for inspirational content that comes out daily. I love comments. I love to hear about what you're looking for. So do not be a stranger. I love you guys.